Last week we talked about how function.call and function.apply work, and used them to do some interesting stuff, including chaining constructors. Today we're going to take a quick look at a few more use cases. Reminder that call and apply are basically the same, except call takes a this argument followed by as many other arguments as you want to give it, where apply takes a this argument and then a single array of other arguments. We're just going to work with call for examples because I find the syntax a little less obtuse. First, let's define some data that we'll be using. I could go on. YouTube is a fantastic place for following musicians, but that seems like plenty. One of the simplest ways in which to use call and apply is to specify a specific this value for an existing function. This is very similar to what we were doing with constructor stringing in the last tutorial, but not quite as complex. We're basically just replacing an argument like, say, data with the function's this property instead. Observe. As you can see, we have a broken example and a working example. Let's go ahead and save this, and we'll take a look. As you can see, both of those are broken. The reason for this is because I didn't type this correctly. The whole point was to use call here. That's a little better. Note that this only works with traditional function declarations and not arrow functions, because the latter don't have a this value to which you can assign things. Generally speaking, I don't see a ton of use for this approach if you're just using plain objects like we are. But in certain cases, it can be handy. For example, if you're passing a large class that already has a lot of things attached to its own this property. Another thing we can do with call and apply is use them to invoke an inline anonymous function, even one that has its own values attached to the this property. This one's weird, but we'll talk through it. Here's the code. Let's go ahead and save that and see if it works. It does. This is a bit of a convoluted example, but we're running a loop and within that loop defining an anonymous constructor function, giving it a name the singers method, and then immediately using that method. However, none of this would run without the dot call, because in each loop we'd just define the function but never actually execute it. So this dot name the singers will never get run without dot call. Also, we'd have no value for this.vocalist and this.name. This is, again, kind of a weird use case, but in a scenario in which you need a temporary anonymous function with a lot of methods, it can be very handy. That's all I've got for this week, keeping the quick and quick hits this time around. Next week, we're going to take a look at maps, which are like objects, but different. See you then.